Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow, here is another Tuesday. We are halfway through June, and guess what? It is amazing. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, and uh, you are looking forward to what life has in store for you. You know, I like to say life takes us to unexpected places, but it is love that brings us home. So let us start today's segment and allow me to gift you first and foremost with uh, everyone says, what is the number? What is the code? So the code is relax. Text RELAX to 818-221-2797 and receive one of my Relax and, uh, relax and Unwind audio recordings and uh, that's my gift to you today. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about how we compartmentalize things and I want to say what is it that we compartmentalize because in life no success or failure is necessary is necessarily the end of it or it's final so how we think how we believe hi Sada John how are you my dear uh, it's so good to see you here thank you for being present and every one of you who is watching and you are present hi mark oh my god mark is back my cheerleader is here i love this thank you for being here you know i felt like i've missed and it's not so much about being here it's like uh, this 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 community of having this conversation and today we're going to be having a conversation you know it's about uh, evoking, embracing, and evolving because you matter. So one of the things I've realized, and I get messages and calls and people who refer either their children, their uh, their loved ones to uh, to me for having a session is just the other day someone says you've been evoking and I've been embracing you and together we are evolving and I thought oh my god that is the best the best testimonial that I got that I have been evoking something in you and you embrace me into your life into your home and together we evolve isn't that amazing so that is the message of everything that I say. So today when we are talking about compartmentalizing, oh, it's so great to see you too. So is our beliefs, our habits, our behaviors, and how do we compartmentalize is the belief system. You know, Byron Katie has this thing that says, a thought is harmless until we believe it. It, it, it really is. So what we believe becomes a reality. So here's my question to you. If you were to go to your closet, just imagine that there are things that you have bought that perhaps you have not worn in months. And I understand it was COVID and you didn't have anywhere to go. But what if I were to say, if you were to go and look at only in the closet, and I'm not even talking about what you have put in storage, what's in the drawers and everything. When was the last time you wore all your clothes? Perhaps there are clothes, shirts, pants, and if you're a woman, skirts and dresses, even accessories that you have not utilized in months, years. I know I have clothes that it's probably about 15 years old and I, I keep my clothes very pristine and the way I take care of my closet and everything, everything is in order in color order in size order right 
But if I were to look at it, so true. So I wonder how much, if you were to do a closet cleaning, there would be things that you have not touched in years that it's just sitting there. And I would even consider you even going back and looking in your drawers. And if you emptied your drawers, how many shirts, uh, even undergarments or things you have been holding onto because it's either one day I will wear it. Oh, I like this one. That one, oh, this person gave this to me that has sentimental connection or you are in the belief that, oh, but I love this. And you're feeling your attachment to your things. And then think about certain behaviors and belief systems that you have been holding on to. That it's really not necessary and that it's not even your belief system, that it is maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents, maybe because of the Joneses, maybe because I do this. Um, I mean, think about the car when you, we go car shopping, even the advertising about cars. You know how they advertise the car? They show this incredible celebrity inside the car or getting into the car. And they show the sexiness about the car. They show the leather. They show the slickness. They show the sunroof opening and you seeing the sky. So in a way, they're, port uh, they're port port portraying the image, the feel of it, the comfort of it which is all connecting to the emotions of what you buy. And yet, it's just like the clothes, the things, the habits and behaviors. Are we attached to the feelings of that or the reality of it? Because a car is a car. It sits on a chassis. It has four wheels. And it's a compartment and we drive it from one destination to the other. I myself am the same. I want my luxury, I want my, it's not about labels, but I want this car because this is what I feel good at. I don't buy a car because of the Joneses, it's because of me, what I like, how I want my car to perform, the speed of it, the power of it, the feel of it. And then I look at the color and then sit in it and go leather because I have overcome that aspect. And yet I still love the feel and the luxury. That's the feeling part of it, which is the incredible marketing of it and not the reality of it. So in reality, what is it that we need? We need love, we need shelter, we need food, which is the fuel, and we need the four wheels to take us from one place to another. And the same thing goes in our clothes and luxuries. How much of that, of your beliefs, of your behavior, your attitude is truly what you need and it is yours. And if you think about it, what is your BS, which is your belief system? So in effect, when you behave in a way just today, I had a client and this client of mine was talking about how her husband's mom, there is certain rules in the house that 
they have to abide by certain rules that there is rules for the kids there is rules for the father-in-law there is rules for her husband and why is it that mother-in-laws always have rules and everything until we came to recognize wow she said all these rules and everything and my husband feels this and that so I asked her a question. What are your rules in your home? And for just a moment, there was a pause. And she looked at me and said, I do have rules. So when we come to express our feelings for the outside, either our parents, our children, our in-laws, our neighbors, what are the same personalities, behaviors, characteristics that we are not privy to or recognize? That as we judge, as we recognize, as we acknowledge other people's in a way, if there was a mirror, how much of that is yours? So wouldn't it be great for you to do a spring cleaning now that it's spring break for you to sit back and write the things that you recognize in other people, the things that you judge, the things that you criticize, the things that you nitpick. What are the things that you can reflect upon yourself, reflect within? Because, you know, I can ask you, who are you waiting for them to validate you, to love you, to give to you? What would it be like if you were to be kinder and give to yourself? And instead of thinking, it's in, instead of saying and thinking but I want you to I want him to I want her to you turn around and say it's not your job to like me it's mine it's not your job to validate me it's mine it's not your job to be kind to me it's mine. I can become kinder to myself. I can start validating myself. What if I start clearing the closet, the things that I really haven't worn, I don't need anymore, and just pay it forward? So what I'm doing is truly evoking certain things for you to think about, to sit back and recognize. If I want kindness, how am I being kind to me? So this incredible client of mine had become so much a daughter, a mother to her kids, even a uh, daughter-in-law and fantastic in that and then recognizing certain things about her husband that why is he just being such a son to his mom and doing everything not recognizing that she's been doing everything just like her mother-in-law becoming a ruler and all this time, the husband wanting what? A wife. That's it. He misses his wife. Not the mother to the children. Not his mother. Not a businesswoman. Not a career woman. His wife. So instead of just talking, what if? You become it. 
and that's why I started by belief systems and Mark says amen and hi hello my dear Adrian says wow just cleaning out my dresser drawer this morning and put some stuff in the donation bag exactly you know sometimes we have to clear certain characteristics that we take it upon ourselves sometimes we don't recognize we do not recognize how we have embraced someone else's way of being that it's not us and if we just peel away peel away all the things like a band-aid that you have placed upon yourself because you had to function you had to fix this you had to arrange that you bought that because of you're holding on to because of and it can be from clothes it can be beliefs it can be behaviors it can be uh, even holding on to a tchotchke and i'm not even Jewish, a tchotchke or you know oh this is so sentimental <laughs> you know what that sentimental thing is just clearing gathering dust that person is no longer in your life if you are holding on to an album from like 20 years ago of a past marriage past relationship just for you to be sentimental I mean I've got pictures in my phone that I can't even go back and look at thousands of pictures. is it sentimental how often do we visit it how often do you look at a behavior that is no longer beneficial to you and say, you know what, it's about time I step up my game. It's no longer wordy. If I am losing a husband because I have not been a wife, and then frankly look at it. Why did you stop? When did you stop? And instead of pointing fingers and blaming, look inside. What do I want to feel like? What would it be if I felt like this? What would it be if I became vulnerable? Because it is a vulnerability. So my challenge to you, it's not even a challenge. My request to you is when I work with my clients I do exactly this when they come in and they start the complaints and the blames and everything I ask the same thing I ask myself the same thing just last week and instead of saying my father used to say this because that's exactly what I used to do my father you know what my father has been gone for four years does that validate for me to hold on to what he said if it is no longer benefiting me wow what would it take for me to step up and say that's what he used to say I thank him for saying it I will utilize it when I need it but I don't have to live by it And that very moment, the little girl stepped up and said, wow, that was a great thing. I evoked something. I just embraced me and validated myself that I can make a decision. So the history of what my father was saying, and God bless his soul, I will remember it I will utilize it when I want to but I no longer need to live by it or I can turn that story and make it my own and how would I utilize it how would I change it to fit my life and where I want to go because if there are pants that are too long for you and you love those pants and it fits great but it's too long you know what you do with it you buy it because you love it 
And if you are a great seamstress, you bring it and you cut it and you shorten it to fit your size, to fit your length. That's how you modify it. Or you just say, you know what? It's too much, it's too expensive, or it's not worth my time to buy that. I will go and buy the one that fits me better because sometimes, just like Garth Brooks said, give thanks to unanswered prayers. When I say text, relax, and receive my audio recording, the gift, is so that you can play it whenever you want to, especially in the comfort of your home, when you're not driving an auto, is so that it becomes embedded in your conscious, in your subconscious mind, how to relax and unwind and let go. Let go of things, let go of holding on to, let go even for 30 minutes and learn and give yourself permission to let go instead of constantly being control so that you can Im immerse into you <sighs> immerse into you to think and say what do I want what do I believe? What does that younger version of me feel like instead of all the things that I am supposed to do, supposed to feel, supposed to be? And it's okay for you to come to learn more about you and clear all the things that you no longer want, you no longer have to, and that's okay. Because at the end, we only live once. And, uh, and as long as you think that the cause of your problem is out there, and as long as you think that anyone or anything in your life is responsible for your suffering, and you are out there to constantly find ways to punish and to think about karma. And what is karma, really? Is karma that all the bad is going to come and bite them and happen to them? No. Karma is embracing where you are and what you feel. Yes, there is karma. Karma is about getting to know you. Karma is living with joy and tapping within. So as we live life, this is why I have this bracelet. As a matter of fact, you can even get this bracelet on my website. It's uh, thehealwithin.com and you can go to shop, get one of my bracelets. And every time you purchase this bracelet and you gift it, uh, to someone or just put it on you from the time that I have it I have not taken this off and it says I evoke embrace evolve at the other side it says I matter it's a constant reminder that I do matter what I feel matters what I think matters my existence matters so in a way, it becomes a self-validation. Because once you come to accept and appreciate yourself, be kinder to yourself, and clear the dust of beliefs, behaviors, habits that no longer serve you, you feel lighter, you feel golden. Hmm. You know what? I'm also excited. I'm so excited. I'm sure you have seen that I am starting my 
Heal Talk with Lisa show. It's an internet online show. It's a TV show that I invite women who have overcome challenges of their own. And if it is you, by all means, please contact me. And where you are today, you have become a change maker. I want to speak and showcase you if you are a change maker and you are here through your experiences to empower others. With that, I also want to say that a part of everything about this show is for me to be on stages to speak and allow and give permission for all to empower the women and girls to speak up, to show up, and stand up for who they are, because you are one of them. Even the guests that I have, and I am so happy I have invited an incredible guest, a friend of mine. His name is Frederick Busey, Frederick Douglas Busey, who's going to be my guest next week. And I am so excited, so I want you to tune in to Heal Talk Tuesday next week, June 29, because we're going to be talking about so much more, not only business, not only stepping up our game, but learning how to break through, breaking the orbit. And the orbit is our own orbit. So thank you for being a part of today. I want you to step up. I want you to show up. I want you to speak up and stand up for who you are. Go clear your closets. Go clear the things. And if you need a guide, if you are ready, by all means, I'm right here for you. Call me, text me, message me. This is Lisa. And I am here to help you, guide you, and support you to heal within. With that, may God's blessings be with you. And God bless you. And the universal light surround you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Ah. Bye, Seda John. Bye, Mark. Thank you for being here. Bye, Adrian. Bye, Arine. Bye, sweetheart. Love you. Bless you, too. And for those of you watching this on a replay, hashtag replay, I love to connect. Thank you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.